Well, police are following new leads in their search for three suspects linked to the attempted murder of the SABC's chief audit executive, Tamizi Gorde, on Friday night. Police say they've received information from the one suspect arrested so far. He's still in hospital after being wounded in a shootout with Zigorde outside his home. The SABC believes Zigorde may have been targeted because of the corruption cases he's been working on. SABC board chair Mbong Musa Makatini says in Intimidation will not derail the internal investigations into maladministration. Zgorda is also a former official in the office of the Auditor General and he previously audited the Prasa locomotives tender. We wouldn't like to divulge lots of information about this case since it's still under investigation and we've got suspects that are still on the run. But what we can confirm is that uh, the suspect that was arrested is still in hospital under police guard. He will be appearing in court as soon as he is out of uh, hospital. We can also confirm that the docket has been assigned to senior detectives from the station and the provincial level who are working on the case. They are working hard to trace and arrest the suspects that are still at large and they are collecting necessary information that will help in the investigation. We are still appealing to anyone who's got information that can help in our investigation to please uh, come forward uh, with that information. Well, the SABC says it will take the necessary steps to protect its people to do their work without any fear. Uh, this uh, follows the assassination attempt against its chief audit executive, Tami Zikode. There is a fight back. If you look at the, 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 the reports that are being covered in the media, there are people who we are trying to make sure that we hold them accountable for what they may have done wrong. And if you look at what Zigot is, is, is the role is about in, at the SAPC, it is clear that there are people who are really fighting back the effort of trying to clean up this place. But at the end of the day, no amount of intimidation or whatsoever that will stop us from doing what is right. As the board, we are fully behind our executive mm -hmm. to do what is right, to bring order in this place. Well, the board and employees of the South African public broadcaster, the SABC, are still reeling from the harrowing escape from the hit. Tamsang Mazikode is the SABC's chief audit executive. He was followed home after knocking off on Friday evening. When he reached his residence, his car was sprayed with bullets during an attempt on his life. Reports suggest that firing back at his would-be assassin say, assassins saved his life. He failed to hit, he failed, uh, the failed hit rather has led to some people calling risk assessment on staff members at the public broadcaster who are uncovering corruption. Zigode is leading a financial cleanup operation at the SABC. Should employees in state-owned enterprises whose jobs are considered as high risk be afforded police protection. To discuss this, we are joined via Skype by Andy Grutko. He's the director of the South African Terrorism Analysis Center. A very good morning to you. How feasible is it to give uh, South African police protection to executives, or, or to, to rather to give protection to executives considering uh, to be doing high-risk jobs? Good morning. Uh, I hope you're not hearing a background hum here. Uh, we've just had a power cut, so I'm running on UPS, which one is of, quite One noisy. of the realities of South Africa. <laughs> Indeed. Um, yes, well, unfortunately, the uh, resources of the South African Police Service in their VIP protection unit are very limited at the moment, and they are uh, stressing to supply protection to those people who are higher up the pecking order, who, who require them. Um, without getting into too much detail, organizations such as the SABC do have their own VIP protection specialists. I don't know at which level they, they kick in, but I think the, uh, the current uh, commissions looking at state capture have created a whole new uh, area of targets that uh, corporations who are involved in the state capture investigations are going to have to consider extending their VIP protection. Andy, we're talking to you and you're a terrorism analyst. Uh, what, 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 what's that kind of work? What, what kind of risks do you study? Well, fortunately, in, in South Africa, we have a very low terrorism risk profile at the moment. Uh, that could change. There are things happening in Mozambique at the moment, which are somewhat alarming. Um, but uh, really, we don't have a major problem this side. 
So the, the function of uh, the SATAC organization is uh, monitoring, in particular advising people who go overseas, South Africans who go overseas, what the risks are that they face there, because that's far graver than the risk of terrorism in this country. So this particular type of uh, attack where a person was presumably attacked because of the kind of sensitive work that they're uncovering, how would we describe that particular uh, risk? Well, as I said, this is a whole new profile that's now emerging with these state capture matters. I don't know if you saw that uh, last week there was a video of uh, Angelo Agrizi being attacked uh, at a petrol station in four ways. I don't know if that was his regular petrol station that he went to, if he was known to go there. But it looked as if a vehicle had followed him and uh, four people attacked him in his vehicle. Fortunately, he was not injured. And it would appear that they were after his, perhaps his laptop. They only took his briefcase and his cell phone. Uh, we do not know whether that was just normal South African robbery because he was driving his uh, uh, 7 Series BMW, which would have made him a target, or if he was being targeted because of the information which he has been giving out and other information that he may be carrying around with him. So that's a whole new category. Uh, generally, if, if we look at the UTC study of uh, 2000, uh, they studied from, sorry, of uh, 2016. They studied from 2000 on and came up with over 1,100 killings, which they identified as being targeted assassinations or hits. Of those, almost half were taxi related. Uh, the next largest category was uh, organized crime, which was very closely followed by political assassinations. And those three elements all intersect. There are elements of uh, business which intrude into the political world, such as with the awarding of tenders. Yeah. Uh, certain uh, officials who are uh, perhaps on tender boards and who are known to be uh, uncorruptible may be removed uh, mm -hmm. from their position one way or another. Mm -hmm. um, and then the final category which UCT looked at was domestic disputes, which were less than 10% of the hired hits of their um, 1100 so that they uh, discovered. So in this particular instance, Tamiz Gode was able to defend himself against the assailants. Is this the kind of uh, advice you would give your clients uh, for argument's sake to be ready for any eventuality? Uh, well, in the case of this SABC chap, I would hope that uh, he had already been briefed by his uh, organization's security people as to what he should do in a case like this. The most obvious thing, the most common advice is, is to do nothing, to give in to the people if, uh, if they're threatening to take you away. Incidentally, in the case of Mr. Agrizi, he had been hijacked before. Uh, I read an article on, it, on him in which he said he'd been hijacked three or four times before. Now, he would be an ideal candidate in his current position to be given uh, counter hijack training, which is available commercially and is supplied uh, by various organizations to their executives through their security structures. So I would hope that uh, this particular SABC executive had been briefed what to do. Uh, I certainly don't advise uh, untrained people to be carrying firearms to try and defend themselves because all they're going to do is increase the possibility that they're going to get killed and possible bystanders as well. Isn't that counterproductive, though, like in this specific case? If he would have stood by and did nothing, we would be uh, telling a different story now, wouldn't we? Yes, every case is, is different, of course. Yeah, uh, yeah, I imagine. I follow a lot of the YouTube videos, and there seems to be a tendency at the moment, in, in particular with criminal hijackings, for the citizens where they can to fight back one way or another, uh, perhaps using your own vehicle as a battering ram. I mean, it could be as simple as... Uh, you will have noticed there are various intersections around Johannesburg to have warning hijack black spot signs. When you see that, uh, one should be cognizant of it and you know, leave some distance between yourself and the car in front of you so that you have an opportunity to maneuver your vehicle. If you box yourself in with traffic, you've got no chance. You're just going to uh, not be able to build up any momentum to, to escape. Uh, these are all things which have to be taught to people. There are things which people will do instinctively and react, and there are yeah. things which people can do on yeah. their own, such as um, uh, bullet-resistant uh, security film being installed on car windows. So in a situation where a person is put under, uh, under protection, um, what, what are the processes in that instance? 
how do you then uh, adapt your life around this new reality? Well, the first process is a, is a risk assessment. Now, with our new phenomenon here of uh, the uh, State Capture Commission and the revelations that are coming up here, the big danger you have there is that this is not like with, with tenders where you can take out a particular obstacle. This person is not an obstacle as such. The, the deeds were done and they've already placed their uh, statements on record, etc. Those people could well be put under pressure, not directly to themselves, but also to their families. Uh, it's far more devastating for a witness in a state capture matter to have one of his uh, family members uh, threatened or to, to disappear, and then pressure to be put onto the witness to change his statement, to retract his statement even. Uh, in a case like that, that's of more value to the person who's trying to cover up the malfeasance than just uh, murdering the witness. So you just, uh, finally, you just gave an example now about that incident with Agrizi at the weekend. What is your general assessment in terms of all the stuff you've heard coming out of the State Capture Commission, of the security position in South Africa? Well, you know, uh, it's estimated that the majority of the, the hits that are carried out in this country uh, come from the taxi violence related uh, networks. They've spilled over into political and business, and they're not particularly sophisticated. They rely on brute force uh, uh, numbers uh, outnumbering the, uh, the victim. So four or five attackers against one person or even one person with a bodyguard. And that, that's how they operate. But where we've now got the international elements coming in, where German companies are being implicated, Israeli companies, Russians, uh, people who are sitting in Dubai, they would bring in uh, proper trained assassins. And this has already been documented in this country, where assassins are brought in, they carry out a hit, and they leave. And even before the, the assassination is discovered, they're already on a plane back to their point of origin. We could well be moving towards that kind of scenario. us a sense of that conversation about the protection of high-risk executives. Thanks for your time.